Warm greetings to all. Uh, today we will have a short session on phylum mollusca. So, phylum mollusca, the word mollusca is derived from a Latin word mollis, which means soft body. So, as you all know, under the phylum mollusca, all the animals coming under the phylum mollusca are soft bodied animals. And it is the second largest phylum of invertebrates, consisting of more than 80,000 living species and about 35,000 fossil species. So, animals coming under phylum mollusca are soft bodied and they are triploblastic. So, triploblastic means their body is derived from three embryonic layers that is, mesoderm, ectoderm, and endoderm. And their body is bilaterally symmetrical. Bilaterally symmetrical means their body is divisible into two equal halves. So they are bilaterally symmetrical animals. And majority of the body coming under phylum molluscan animals are enclosed in a calcareous shell. And this shell can be either internal, external, and in some cases it is reduced or absent. And the body is consisting of a heterogeneous, visceral mass, and food. Then in this heterogeneous, it bears all the sensory organs. Then visceral mass, under visceral mass, all the internal organs are present, and food is used for locomotion. And another distinguishing character or feature of molluscan species are the presence of radula. The radula is present in most of the uh, molluscan species. So the speciality of radula, the radula is the is a racing organ present in the buccal cavity. So this chitinous ribbon-like structure known as radula helps to scrap and cut the food before it enters into the esophagus. Then it possesses open circulatory system. Then respiration is through using kinidia and pulmonary sacs. Then the sexes are either subcutaneous. And based on above mentioned characteristics, the phylum mollusca is again segregated into different different classes. Here are the different classes stated here. First one is aplocophora, followed by monoplacophora, polyplacophora, bivalvia, gastropoda, cephalopoda, and scaphopoda. Now, now let's have a detailed note on each class. The first one is aplocophora. So, as the name suggests, aplacophora means they are not bearing a shell or plates on their body. So, under class aplacophora, it includes worm like animals with no shell but have a rudimentary body structure. And they are mostly benthic marine habitats. We can see them mostly on sea bottoms or marine bottoms. And these animals lack a calcareous shell. As we stated below, no plates or no shells are present on their dorsal side. But at the same time, they possess uh, calcium spicules on their epidermis. And they have a rudimentary mandible cavity and lack eyes, tentacles, and nephritia. An example for aplacophora is Kichoderma. Then the next class is monoplacophora. Mono means one or single. So, under the class monoplacophora, all the members have a one single shell on their body or bearing one plate. So, members of class monoplacophora possess a single cap like shell that encloses their body. Then, the morphology of the shell and underlying animals can vary from circular shape to oval shape. And a lobed digestive system is present and multiple pairs of excretory organs are present. In the case of uh, monoplacophora, five pairs of nephridia is present for excretory purposes. And many gill, five to six uh, pairs of gills and a pair of gonads are present in, the, in this animals. An example for monoplacophora is Neopilina galactic. Then moving on to the third one, that is polyplacophora. So this members of polyplacophora is also known as chitons. Then the speciality of a species coming under polyplacophora is that their body is bare and arm-like, eight-plated dorsal shell. 
this is specialty of chitons. So it is uh, commonly known as chitin and it bear an armor-like eight-plated dorsal shell. And it have a broad ventral foot and it is designed in a way that it is adapted for suction to rocks and other suitable subspace. And its mandle extends beyond the shell in the form of a girdle and on the girdle calcarean spines are present. So the main function of this calcarean spine is to offer protection from predators. Then most of the chitin species inhabit in, in the tidal, subtidal area, but it do not extend beyond the fortic zone. So example is chitin. Then the next one is Persipora. Persipora is also known as bivalvia. So the specialty of bivalvia is that their body is made up of two shells. Shells of two equal shells or two valves and the body is placed inside this laterally positioned valves. And examples for Persipora or bivalvia include clams, oysters, mussels, scallops, etc. And a specialty of uh, species coming under Persipora is that most of them are filter feeders and do, they do not have head or radula. Then the gills have evolved into tinidia, specialized organs for breeding and breathing, feeding and breathing, and eyes are absent in the case of Viralia. Then the shells, the two valves is composed of calcium carbonate and it usually of similar parts. Then this is the images of clams, oysters and scallops. Then next one is gastropoda. So gastropoda it is one of the biggest group I and mean, biggest class coming under phylum mollusca. And most of the molluscan species, species coming under phylum mollusca are coming under class gastropoda. So this animals in gastropoda is also known as stomach food animals because their food is present on the abdominal side. And main examples for gastropoda include snails, slugs, conches, sea hares, sea butterflies, etc. And it includes shell bearing species as well as species with a reduced shell. So species with shell and species with reduced shell are also present under class gastropoda. In most of the ca cases, the shells may be either in planospiral shape or in conspiral in shape. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, by far the largest and most diverse molluscan class is gastropoda and over 80% of molluscan species are gastropoda. And the class gastropoda is further divided into three, namely prosobranchia, opistobranchia, and palmonita. And these are some of the examples or images for gastropoda, snail, conches, etc. Then the next one is cephalopoda. You might be familiar with uh, the species coming under cephalopoda, like octopus, screw, cuttlefish, etc. All are coming under the class cephalopoda. So in cephalopoda, they are also known as head food animals because their food is developed or modified in, into the form of tentacles in the head region. So these tentacles are used by them for their locomotory purposes. So and they may lack a shell or shell may be reduced to a stiffening road inside their body. Then food is highly modified to form a group of tentacles around the mouth and they displace vivid coloration and all animals in this class are carnivorous predators and have a beak like jaws at the anterior end and all cephalopods used to show the presence of a very well developed nervous system along with eyes it is also a specialty as well as a closed circulatory system is present in cephalopods a pair of nephridia is present for the excretory purposes. Then sexual dimorphism is seen in this class of animals. And another peculiar feature is the presence of gland in their body. Then well-developed sense organs are also observed in cephalopoda. Then 
Cephalopoda is also again further divided into three subclasses, uh, Nautilidae, Ammonioidae and Belemnoidae. And these are the images for cuttlefish, squid, and octopus. Then the last one is Scaphopoda. So Scaphopoda means also referred to as bird feed animals and colloquially it is, it is most commonly known as tusk shells or tooth shells. Then Scaphophodes are usually buried in sand with anterior opening exposed to water. And in their two ends, it, the animals bear a single conical shell with both ends open in open form. Then the head is rudimentary and protrudes out the posterior end of the shell. So here is the image for tusk shell or scaphophodes. And these animals do not possess eyes, but they have a radula as well as food modified into tentacles known as captaculae. So their food is modified into a bulbous end and it is referred to as captaculae and it is used for their locomotion. And tinidia are absent in these animals. So as we all, today we discussed about the characteristics of phylum mollusca and the important classes coming under phylum mollusca. I hope you all understand. Thank you.